Africa for a statistics class, as we get to learn something to do with the empirical rule, which is famously known as the 68-95-99.7 rule. This is a typical rule which is normally applied in what is known as the normal distribution. Now, if you talk about normal distribution, we are referring to this particular uh, scenario whereby the data which are normally found in everyday life, like heights, for example, things to do with age, are evenly distributed such that these particular variables will vary according to the individual and according to the environment. And this particular data in real life situation will normally be represented by what is known as the normal distribution curve. Another name for this particular curve is known as a bell curve. As you can see, the shape is in the shape of a, of a bell. So, if you talk about some of the properties of this particular uh, uh, curve, just to understand a little bit before we look at the questions that will uh, reinforce our understanding, you will realize that one of the properties that it is symmetrical. To be symmetrical means that when divided at the center into two halves, we will have two equal parts. Like we are going to have this part be equal to this other part. Another property is that the area under the curve will normally be equal to 1, or if you like, will normally be equal to 100%. And then the last property, which is very vital, is that the mean will be the same as the medium, and also the same as the mode. So we have the mean at the center, which is the average of all the collection of data. Now, why are we talking about the 68, 95, and 99.7 rule? These numerical values actually refers to the measure or explanation of what is known as the standard deviation. So, the standard deviation of this particular distribution of data, abbreviated as S, will normally show how spread the data is from the mean. We have the, we have the mean value of this particular data at the center. So towards the right and towards the left, we have what is referred to as the standard deviation. That is how spread is the data. And if you find that if you have a larger standard deviation, it means that this particular curve is going to widen out. But if you have a smaller standard deviation, the data is going to, I mean, the curve is going to narrow in and the peak is going to rise. So it measures or it actually shows how spread the data is as we move on, we are going to understand more about that. So, 68 is actually a percentage of area which is normally covered by what is known as one standard deviation. If you talk about 60, 99% is an area which is covered by two standard deviation. And finally, 99.7% represent an area which is covered by three standard deviation. One standard deviation means one spread to the left, another one to the right. Two means Two spread to the left and two to the right, and then three means three spread to the left and three to the right. So if we present this particular 
deformation we have for the wheel we have a spread of one to the right so we are going to have this one this one is one star deviation and the area is 68 percent if we come from the wheel for two star deviation we are going to have one so the range will be one two again one two so we have this particular range here this one stands for two standard deviation and the area is supposed to be 95 percent and finally three we have one two three equally one two three we have this particular range here for the interval So the area in between the range is three star deviation totally to 99.7 percent that way <coughs> so we normally have 68 percent and so on so with this one in mind we can now be able to tackle the question and we are told that the, the weights of patients at a hospital measured by Dr. Olude for, follows a normal distribution with a wheel of 78 kilograms and a standard deviation of 6 kilograms. It should be 6 kilograms. So it means the weights of these patients can go below by 6 kilograms are also up by 6 that is, that is the spread of the weight then you are told find the range around the mean that includes 95% of the weights so we have our mean represented by 78 kilograms then standard deviation of S is given as 6 kilograms. But you're supposed to talk about the 95, the 95%. What range are we going to have that will be, be, will be, uh, will be shown by this particular area of 95%, which is essentially equivalent to two standard deviation and because we are talking about we are talking about we are told to find the range remember that our range must always be we must always have a lower limit for the weight all the way to an upper limit of the range but now, because we already know that our standard deviation is 2, we can actually talk about either of the ranges, either of the limits. So if you talk about the first limit, which is the lower limit, it means we will go down by 2 standard deviation from the mean, which is actually... Our mean is 6, so we go downwards by 2 standard deviation and also up by 2 standard deviation to get our lower and our upper limit. So how do we get the lower limit? It will simply... I mean, this one is supposed to be 78, sorry. 78 is our mean. So it's supposed to be 2 standard deviation. It should be minus 2 standard deviation. Uh, minus 2 uh, times the standard deviation of 6. We add this one to 78. And for the upper one, it will be 
plus two solar division according to the area times six. Okay, we add the answer to seventy-eight, which is the mean. So how do we get the lower one? This is negative twelve plus seventy-eight. So we have twelve. Negative 12 plus 78 is supposed to be 66. So the lower one is 66. Again, we have the same positive 12 plus 78. We have 90. 90. 90 kilograms. So it means our range lies between 60, 66 kilograms to 90 kilograms. Well, that is how we apply the empirical rule system. Now, I'll just look at to have another example. If now suppose that we are now given the ranges and we are now supposed to approximate the area. In this case, we are given the area percentage and we are supposed to find the range. What about now if we are given the range now instead? This is now what the question states. The height of students chosen at random follows a normal distribution with a mean of 160. So our mean is 60 centimeter and a standard deviation of 7.8. So we have a standard deviation of 7.8. So it means the heights can go up or go below by 7.8 from 160. What is the approximate percentage of students between 137 centimeter, uh, 0.5 centimeters and 182.5 centimeters? So in this case, we are supposed to determine the percentage, whether it is 68, 95, or 99.7. So how do we begin this particular work? <coughs> we have our mean at the center, which is 160 centimeters. And for the mean, we have our lower range, which is 137.5. And the upper one we are given as 182.5. Okay. So we are supposed to determine the percentage or the movement or the value which represents what is known as <coughs> our standard deviation. We can work either way using the mean and the lower limit or the mean with the upper limit. But we know that because we have our standard deviation, it means you want to see how many times is the standard deviation of 7.8 spread until we get to 182.5 now if you start if you choose if we choose to use the upper limit you should know us that uh, moving from the mean moving from the mean which is 160 plus Let's take, for example, our standard deviation to be taken as S plus S times the standard deviation itself, which is 7.8, should give us 182.5. That is how many times, S represents how many times this data is spread from the mean. So we have 160 plus 
8 i think it's it's supposed to be 7.5 sorry it's supposed to be 7.5 7.5 b7.5 sorry 7.5 s is 182.5 okay so it means that our 7.5 s is supposed to be 182.5 minus 160 so 7.5 s is the same as this is 22.5 so how do we get s s is gotten by 22.5 divided by 7.5 so 22.5 divided by 7.5 we get a value of 3 3 so it means that <coughs> our our data was spread three times either to the left or to the right equally for us to get for us to prove our once again we can prove it by doing the other way around again it's supposed to know that we have a standard deviation of 7.5 so it's supposed to be when you add this 135 137.5 plus that is times 7.5 should give you 160 so it means that uh, uh, it means that uh, 135 137.5 Minus 160 minus, uh, minus 160 is supposed to be equal to negative 7.5s. So again, we have 137.5 minus 160, we have negative 22.5 is the same as negative 7.5 s again s will be that one divided by 7.5 which is the same as 3 so we have proven our answer now because we have a 3 standard deviation it means that our area is 99.7 percent so the area is 99.7 percent according to the empirical rule thank you very much and if you find this video helpful kindly subscribe